This week we're doing a user requested topic and we're gonna take a look at some of the features within the export menu. Welcome to Feature Focus. Welcome back to Feature Focus. I'm Justin Tolman. I'm the director of training over in North America at Access Data and Xtero Company. And this week we're gonna take a look at some of the options in the export menu within FTK. So let's jump into FTK and take a look at it. To set the stage here, what I have is some expanded event logs. And then what I've done is I've filtered it down to a specific type of login, physical or interactive login, logon type two, and a specific user, Raylan Givens, just to kind of control the data set, make it a little smaller and a little easier to work with. So that's the filter that you're gonna see active here. And the reason I also chose these is Exporting normal files is pretty straightforward. You're going to take a picture, Word document, Excel, right click on it, export that file to a directory. That's cool. And there's some options that we can do with that for sure at any given point. But with these files, these are expanded. We've parsed the event logs. And so they are access data created files to display the information to you. So we'll talk about how to export these files, prepare them for reporting and so on. Okay, so I have about 20 listed here. And to get to the export menu, we simply right click and we choose export. The export dialog window will open and let's talk about a few features here that can be useful for this type of export. So first the format that these files are displayed in is HTML. You can see that in the background here. Uh, we have an HTML table that displays the various information associated with this event log. And if you wanted to save this view here, we can save that HTML view if available. We select that, and it's gonna bring it out. Now, for these files, there is only the HTML view because these don't exist outside of the event log. We, FTK has brought them out. Depending on the type of files, how many files, and what the chances are that you're gonna to have to come back and review those files again or revisit them, and if you're not bookmarking them, you can also append the item number to the file name. Just be aware that the item number is, is case specific. So if you were to process this case here and then send it to somebody else and they were to process it, the item numbers would not line up per item. The item number is assigned in the order the processing engine processes it, comes across it, and that's not always going to be consistent. In fact, it rarely will be. Um, so don't get too hung up on those. It would be used to uniquely identify that item within your case. So you could append that to the end. If you're using Python scripter and export using the Python scripter, this will be enabled by default. So we don't need that here. We'll deselect it, but that's what it would do. Let's go ahead and create a manifest file. The manifest file is a file that will be created and will be stored near where you export it. And what I mean by that, we'll talk about later. So the manifest file will include the hash values, the item numbers, the path, and the path in item numbers and some other information that we'll take a look at when we create it. Now this is the part where no matter how long you've been using FTK, you might skip. Uh, just get in the habit of always checking this items to include. So you have your choices of all highlighted, all checked, all listed, and all. So we're gonna select all listed to get all 20 of our output, and then we specify the base path. It can go anywhere. Okay, so we'll leave it in Pi in, and we'll click okay. Once the export finishes, it'll tell you how many items were exported and if there's any errors. If there's any errors encountered, it will automatically create a manifest. We told it to create one anyway, but if there is errors, it will create one and actually provide a link that you can open it up and take a look. So we'll click OK and then it's gonna open up that directory. Once the directory opens, we see we have 40 items. We have the file we exported as well as the HTML view that we requested. So if we were to open up that HTML view, we get what we see in the tool and it's ready for reporting, sending out to someone and it, they don't need any special tools to view this information because it's just HTML. It'll open in whatever browser they want. Now on this export, I'm gonna go up one directory and you'll notice that our export was put into the directory one within the pi in directory, even though we didn't specify that it would go into one. What FTK will do is if it detects any other files within your output directory, it will create a directory numbered in this case one and then put it 
inside of that. So to force that behavior, I just put a text file in here called one.txt and it forced FTK to create a directory when it detected that there was already a file within Pi1. The next export would be two, the following one would be three. Now let's say that I export two, then three, and then I delete number two, the next export will be number two. So FTK will scan and say, is there a one directory? Yes, okay, so I can't do that one. Is there a two? No, okay, two, even though there may be a three, four, five, six, it'll just fill in the next available number. What I would recommend is then coming in, renaming this to event logs, you know, login or, or something like that to where you know, because if you export a lot of things, you're just gonna have a list of numbers. And if working a case covers a couple days, chances that you remember which numbers are which after a while get kind of tedious. The manifest file will be stored outside of that directory and will contain the directory name within the file name. You can see here, FTK export summary dot one dot text. If there's no directory created, it'll just be FTK export summary dot text and it'll be stored with the files. Okay. So if we open that, it's not the clearest in this format. It's a text file, comma separated value. Okay. So you can open it in the text, you can send it as a text, but recommended open it in Excel. I'll show you how to do that real quick here. So we'll open up Excel. We're gonna open up a blank workbook. We'll go over to data from text or CSV. And we will go to our desktop and pi in, and we'll grab our export summary and click import. It's gonna read it and it gives you a little preview here. Now I'm using the latest version of Office or at least a newer version. So uh, this is what it looks like and it's actually fairly robust in bringing it in. It detects that there's a header in that file but still comma separates everything that comes after it. You can see it looks pretty decent. So if you don't have the newest or newer version of Excel, you may have to do a little bit more work here to get it to break down how you want. So we'll go ahead and click load the data loads up. Some of the information that we have is the item number and the path. And if we scan over a little bit, we have the original MD5. If you process the MD5 in your case, that's what that means. That is the MD5 that was listed in FTK whenever you process that file. Then the exported MD5 of the file you exported and this is the verification for you that the export was successful in that it was a one-to-one -one exact copy, exact forensic copy. Same with SHA-1. And if you didn't process one of these, you'll see this zero. There's nothing there. It's not reported. SHA-256, for example, very rarely run. Um, so that'll typically be a zero, but you can see the export process when you create a manifest will run the SHA-256 and you'll get that output here. So this can be used to validate your export. This is exact. Do whatever you want, zip it up, burn it to a disk, deliver it however you would. And here is the information that shows that yes, it was exported out exactly. Okay, so just a quick little episode today on exporting files that aren't just normal files, pictures, documents, whatever that are standalone. These are files that FTK has created uh, to display for you, but they can still be exported and still be viewed um, in an easy way. Once again, thanks for watching. And if you're at Techno next week-ish, in a week and a half, week and change, uh, look us up. We'll have a booth there. We'll be running around. So we'll hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.